Bobber's ready. Go! Trap is spoken. Boston Rob and Amber are gonna do it. This is a, a business trip, as I like to say. You, Brad Culpepper. I'm tired of you and the fucking chickens. You can call me the puppet master. They're gonna be my little puppets. It's not like you're making me feel the devil here. You get to milk your own milk, I guess. Who the hell bought it for me? Chicken. Damn! We got enough rocks here, too. We could build a pretty decent shelter just using rocks. I'm supposed to talk glamour to you. <laughs> You understand that better? Direct from Hobart, it's time for the only Survivor podcast in Australia dedicated to Survivor. Bringing you all the latest interviews, episodes, and opinions from the greatest reality show on the planet. It's Survivor Oz, and here's your host, Ben Waterworth. Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to Survivor Oz, Australia's number one TV and film podcast, as we come to you once again, not live to talk about Survivor Worlds Apart. Episode 7, we had one week of being live and then we've gone back to not being live and then next week we go back to being live. Go figure. Uh, my name is Ben. I have not been fired. Thank you for asking. And uh, joining us, I have four Oslets to chat about this week's episode of Survivor, including Canada's number one male. It is Colin Hilding. Colin, welcome back to Survivor Oz. Wow. Well, w- one correction. It's not Canada. It's Anadas. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Anada. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Canada is too good for a, a terrible shorten. Is, is that is that like what they say in... Well, it's not the deep south in Canada. Of course, it's the deep north. Um, yeah. <laughs> is that what all the um, the newfies say? Oh, hey, I come from Anada. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's that's pretty much what they've said since the beginning of the, the country, what, 150, 200 years ago. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. Well, um, I'm glad that you're here to represent Anada. Uh, <laughs> joining us from Oo-Alf Ales, it is none other than uh, Jared Lubick. Jared, welcome back to Survivor Oz. Thank you. It's it's good to be back on such a great episode of Dropping Letters. Yes. <laughs> well, that's what we're, funnily enough, we're changing the name of our show to. It's Oviva Z. Uh, <laughs> also joining us all the way from Alf Obart, it's all a trail. All oh, welcome back to Survivor Oz. Yeah, it's good to be here. I think that Australians typically drop more than one. It's Australia, so it's about <laughs> I don't know, it's just modulation all over the place. But yeah, this is a this is a good episode. I uh, I was yeah, I like this one. It's a lot to talk about. I think. Well, indeed. And uh, joining us from Nug, it's Oa. Oa Rose. Uh, Oa, welcome back to Aviva Zoo. Yeah, um, I loved Australian Survivor from 2001 when they named the Merge Tribe Australia. That was a good one. <laughs> oh. Like, surely Teabag or something is better than America, but... Yeah. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. But thanks for having me here. I just, I just want to um, say, I'm going to start off by saying the c word here because I, I feel oh, no, warning. Man. I am about to say the c word because there is a, an Australian saying when, like, you know, there's like a picture of people drinking and some stupid thing. There's a like an image they put up on the internet that says "Stray it can't." Um, so, like, is that what they would call the Merge Tribe if they ever did one here? Uh, I don't know. Definitely. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, look, just before we start, um, I need to start off with another statement. Um, obviously, we had to read out one last week. Um, I want to read out another one this week, and that is, um, I formally wish to declare this episode open, and let's start talking about Survivor. <laughs> I had to go in there. That's hilarious. That's one of my bad jokes that all the fans online love. That's why me. people hate us. Yes. <laughs> I expect to see some good <laughs> comments on sucks after that dad joke. Um, <laughs> let's start off with Paul after that awkward moment. Uh, we're not live. I can edit that out. Um, Paul, you said there's a lot to talk about. You enjoyed the episode. Why did you enjoy this episode? Uh, I think there was just so many things that people who, if they were fans of the show, the players, the contestants, if they were fans of the show, they should they would have been able to rectify the situation or, or whatever. I think that starting with the, the immunity challenge, everyone knows you don't wear shoes in that challenge. <laughs> you just you can't stay up there for long enough with, with shoes. You just can't get a good enough grip. Um, it, it was ridiculous. And it was strange to see Shireen. Even Shireen was wearing shoes. I thought she was the biggest fan left out there. But, yeah. Um, yeah, and just the way it played out, the whole, the whole thing, I didn't know how it was going to go. It did tend to, to look as though... Everyone was getting up on the no collars towards the end, um, but yeah, the the final tribal council. I think that Jen, she could have played it 
better. I think she, even though she she played it right, but she could have covered two bases. She could have done the whole Tony thing, basically pulled out the idol in the middle of the tribal council, told everyone she had it, she was going to play it for herself. They would have had to have switched their vote off of her, and then she gives it to Haley. That's that's the move, how you cover two people, basically. Tony did in Kagayan. Um, it didn't... Obviously, they didn't end up voting for the two people that he was covering himself and LJ, but it still covers two people, and that's that's how you do it. If you if you had to watch the show, you you'd know that that's the play. Um, but need, it was. Did we not need like a Natalie to be like, dude, play your idol? <laughs> I don't know. Ben, uh, watch your mouth, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> this is going to happen constantly now. Everyone's just got this. Everyone's got this in the back of their head. Just got to pick up on everything. Got to cut down. <laughs> Stick to the Tony impressions. Stick no, to the play. No. That's racist yes. against New Jersey. Stick to the play. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. But yeah, no, and and anyway, they shouldn't have voted out um, Kelly. I don't think they should have. I think they should have voted out Mike, the ringleader. Uh, Kelly was basically she didn't have that stronger ties with anyone else other than Mike. Uh, and they're just going to gang up against them now, six. Even though it looked like Rodney was trying to get something happening, I think that the, the more solid uh, way it's probably going to pan out is those six that didn't vote with, or even seven that didn't vote with Jen, Haley, Shireen, and Joe, probably just going to stick together and vote them out now anyway. So it didn't work out that well. All right. Colin? I love this week. Uh, I think it's... Definitely the best since episode two where Vince uh, was voted out. Um, it, it was a really strong merge episode. I love the last couple of weeks, how the show's been edited, that it's just there's no way of predicting what's going on. And at the same time, I also love that once the episode ended, I still had no clue how things were going to play out next week. Um, the, the show's becoming really unpredictable and... Uh, uh, I, I I disagree with Paul. I think that Jen playing her idol is probably the smart move, especially if you are playing with a bunch of fans to to try to do a ploy where you're gonna you know say I'm gonna play the idol and get to somebody else. They may have been it's not a guarantee, but they may have been expecting that if she were to try that. And uh, I just love that anybody plays their idol when somebody plays the idol and they would have gone out otherwise. That always makes for a good ending to an episode. Noah? Uh, I haven't been too positive about this season. I did enjoy this episode, though. I'm probably in agreement with Colin that it's probably the best episode since the Vince boot episode because it's been a bit of a lacklustre pre-merge. But I thought it was a enjoyable episode. I don't think it was as good as the Kagiyan Philippines or even All-Star merge episodes if we're talking three tribes. But there was a lot of stuff in there. This is probably the most... Uh, strategy heavy I guess you could say or the most uh, topics for us to talk about on a show that's talking about survivor strategy I guess Um, uh, I don't even know what I'm saying but (laughs) it it, it was a good episode and there was a lot of stuff in there but yeah I don't know a lot of people were saying on Twitter and Facebook that they had no idea who was going home I thought but after the challenge, I think it was pretty damn obvious it was either going to be Kelly or Jen. Like, I thought there was no surprise in that regard. And when Kelly went, it wasn't like, eh. Like, it was no Sarah Lacina, but it was a fun episode. I enjoyed it. And that's how it should be. Jared, you can go last. Uh, I enjoyed it. I don't know. There's something about this season. I just, I had the feeling, like, right from the start in the preview that Kelly was going home, just the way so that previously on Survivor, like, the, just the way that um, they explain the whole, like, um, throwing the challenge. It wasn't like Mike thought that Kelly might be in trouble. It was the way they said it was kind of like Kelly was on the outs on her tribe, so they threw the challenge and they kind of just sort of changed the narrative on that a bit and it just sort of yep. felt like Kelly was going home. Although I did think that um, the white callers would vote with the no callers, so it was a surprise to me sort of that everybody sort of flipped to the, to the blue collar side. Um, but yeah, I don't, there's there's something about this cast. I can't really find a person who I constantly like. There's nobody who I'm really hoping will do well. I mean, apart from Carolyn is sort of the only person who I'm constantly liking. Um, everybody else, they kind of swing back and forth, like them, don't like them, couldn't be bothered. Well, I will say that straight away, I agree with you a hundred percent about Kelly. Because the first thing I wrote down in my notes is Kelly. 
And um, generally, that's kind of my way of saying to myself, well, that person's in trouble. Um, so, I, yeah, I, straight away, the way they edited it, I'm like, well, Kelly has a chance of going home. Um, and then about a couple minutes later, I got spoiled from a tweet that came through on my phone because obviously I didn't watch it live, but whatever. Um, but, yeah, yeah, anyway. Uh, now, I want to start out with a random question, a random <coughs> trivia question, and I think only one person has the possibility of getting this correct. I could be wrong. There was an Australian reference in this episode this week. Can anybody tell me what it was? Australian reference. That's a sports person. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You must be talking about me. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about an Australian Outback reference? Or no, just no, no. An Australia. I don't know if I, a reference know if I call to Australia. It. Well, uh, Jared, you're on the money there with the sports person. What sport? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know his name, but he's a basketball or something, apparently. Oh, Andrew James. Luke Longley. Oh, I'm now, if you caught it, I just wanted to point that out, because that's, I think, the only time in the history of... TV in the 2000s and 2010s that Luke Longley gets referenced on a non-NBA broadcast. <laughs> and it was in the context that he was the shit end of the spectrum yeah. as well. It was Michael Jordan and Luke Longley. <laughs> For anybody who doesn't know who Luke Longley is, who isn't a basketball fan, he was an Australian basketball who was part of uh, the Chicago Bulls dynasty when Jordan and Scottie Pippen and all that were winning in the 90s. And um, he was like, you know, number four or number five in that team. But um, yeah, I, as soon as Rodney said that I'm like, what the fuck? Luke Longley reference? Like, who brings Luke Longley up in Survivor? But anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, and can I just Bower Longley? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, I just want to point out, Rodney, uh, I said this to Noah earlier today, he's probably creeped into my top 20 favourite Survivor contestants of all time. I fucking <laughs> love Rodney so much. I just want to just extend the love to Rodney. Just putting it out there. Um... <laughs> I don't know why I needed to say that. Anyway, uh, he was putting on a De Niro as well. Yeah. Um, he wanted to be Mike's bitch. Um, <laughs> sorry, I've just written down quotes here. Um, anytime there's a blind side, there's a person. I think that was a Mike quote, wasn't it? Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, Colin, Rodney's reaction to the whole blind side of Joaquin. It surprised me that he didn't come back to camp and um, Tina Wesson did out there from Blood vs. Water. But... Um, were you surprised he was so calm? I expected him to go full Tina Wesson, um, <laughs> but uh, he, he surprised me throughout the entire episode. I mean, the the reaction they had back at camp was good. It, I, I think that a lot of us have been unsure about Rodney, especially since the, the blow-ups he had with Mike uh, in uh, the much-loved episode three, but... <laughs> even even once they merged and they're all saying like, oh, well, we thought that Rodney and Joaquin would have bonded and they're almost making fun of him and he seemed to kind of laugh it off. I mean, I think that he's he's finally playing the game really smart and as we saw how everything transpired at Tribal Council, it was been very easy, especially for what we thought his reaction would have been, for him to just go completely rogue and maybe jump the gun in trying to get revenge on everybody, but he's he's playing it a lot more cautious, and uh, he was a lot more likable this week, too, uh, by being a little bit uh, more cautious with his game. It's interesting how we started this season off, like, going, hey, you know, this guy's actually not as, you know, out there and abrasive as we all thought he would be. This guy's actually a pretty good player. Then, yeah, as you said, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, here he is, here's Rodney. And now he's kind of back to being Mr. Calm. But um, anybody who listened to our Richard Hatch recap last week, I mean, Richard Hatch, you know, said he's no chance in hell at winning this game. Uh, Paul, can you see Rodney winning this game? I don't know. Rodney strikes me as the kind of person that if things get too stagnant for a while, that's when he starts to get antsy. And then we saw he was just with those people for too long. And he just that's when he started to let his kind of true personality come out. We've shifted again and Rodney is able to shift and he's able to go back into his kind of game face kind of mode, I think, um, now. But it will, I think it's we're going to get back to that Rodney who, who blows up at people pretty soon once he gets fed up with dealing with the same people for a while. That's, that's just my take on it. 
I just, I just have to say this, and again, I, I tread on very thin ice when I start impersonating people now. Um, but um, <laughs> who the hell voted for Jack? Uh, Jack, I block. Block. Ben, you're on fire tonight. <laughs> I, that's a sentence that never should be uttered ever in a Rupert voice. Like, who the hell voted for Block? <laughs> who the hell voted for Jock? As you say, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh Ben. Uh, um sorry, sorry to all our pirates listening. God, I'll read a statement out next week. Um Noah <laughs> Rodney. Um <laughs> uh, I'm so conflicted on him. I do like him because he's freaking funny, but uh, he was much more cool, calm, collected, and I kind of had the I guess not really a theory, but if this cast is so close as they claim, then maybe it's not completely out of the realms of possibility that Rodney could be the winner. If they're a really close cast and they're not bitter, maybe he'll do enough that people will say, because you're certainly getting enough of an edit, and it's not like we can say his edit is really negative compared to others, because Mike also had... um, a bit of a blowout in our favourite episode. Um, so, uh, like, if we're... A lot of people say Mike, and Mike a lot more cool, can and collected, but I don't know, maybe Rodney has a shot that bit at the start of episode one about his sister and all that. Like, mm. it definitely seemed like something they could play in a winner package at the end of the season in the reunion, but, yeah, I don't know, it's just... I want to love him as a, a big strategic player, but he always seems to go running back to Mike. I'm not sure if he will always make the best decisions. It seems like he's going to always go running back, even when he says he's not going to. So I'm not too sure about Rodney. The, the thing is, which is interesting, if if we went back to episode one, two, what you were mentioning about Mike, and like Mike was the one everybody was... I think I said in one of my rankings, and like maybe it was week three, where I'm like... Mike is gone if Blue Collar lose. I mean, he is so hated. Like, everyone's going off at him. He's so, you know, not fitting in with the tribe. And it seemed then it flipped around, then it was Rodney, and then Mike is well-liked. And I don't know. It's, it's kind of interesting how it transitioned into into that. But now we've kind of maybe got Mike and Rodney with the, the three Cs. as um, Mike, Rodney, and Dan, final three. <laughs> oh I, I, I still felt like... <laughs> Early on, Mike was still at the centre of that tribe, though. We saw Dan kind of being, I don't know, them talking about Dan, but Dan always seemed like he was on the outs, whereas when they were, even when they were ripping into Mike, they'd sit down and they were just having a discussion with him about what they didn't like about him, which seems like someone who's, yeah. Was that a discussion, though? Like, they is your God going to come down and do that? Yeah. Like, that seemed to be... There were those things, but I think that for the most part, there was still, there was effort put in by the others to try and connect with Mike, whereas with Dan, they just seem like, oh, we'll just laugh behind his back. <laughs> That's true. I, I did love, if we're talking about Rodney, Joe's comment. Uh, I, I think <laughs> maybe it was Carolyn that asked him. I can't remember who asked him. Shireen, maybe. <laughs> yeah. uh, is Rodney smart? The what look, do you think? The look on Joe's face, there was that like one second pause where Joe had that look and up. I think they even used subtitles for it, did they? What do you think? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was funny. Yeah, is I'm... Rodney smart? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag massive dunce. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Boston strong, baby. Um, uh, Carolyn Rocks, what do you think of um, Rodney's game at the moment? <laughs> it's definitely interesting. Um, I would love to see Rodney sit in front of a jury and explain things and answer questions. I mean, even... To see him win would be great, but just to see him in the final three, final two, answering questions... Um, would just be interesting because I'd like to see him sort of justify what he did and see if these people would be willing to vote for him in the end. Oh, I'll tell you one thing. If Rodney won this season, uh, t- top five, baby. Like, <laughs> oh, it'd be such a such an amazing win. I would love it so much. Um, we get the merch. Um, we we kind of get a bit before that. We get the tree mail and um, Will talking about he thinks that a reward and then it was Kelly, wasn't it, saying, no, I think it might be a merge. And then Kelly basically saying, no, I'm definitely not with the blue collars. Absolutely not. And then cute yeah. confessional, I am with the blue collar all the way. Um, I love it when they do that. <laughs> yes. uh, we get the merge. Uh, they go to the old Escamecca Beach and everything's been ripped away and we, of course... 
have to bring up Dan. Merge time, baby. Food. Food. <laughs> and then Haley's con- comment. I'm like a Greek goddess. I don't know, just random little comments there. And I want to mention the buffs, because I, I brought this up to Noah. Um, it's, I mean, the buff's black, but it's got purple on it. And obviously, we've seen in the past with the black buffs, when they have the mergers, that they have other colours on them. But I love this buff. This is an amazing-looking buff. Buff, black and purple. Um, uh, Jared, what, what do you think of the buff? Yeah, I'm feeling it. Um... Yeah, black buffs, they're usually a bit boring, but I think just adding the colour and having so much of that other colour instead of just kind of like the side panel, the purple is just everywhere, so it's almost, yeah, like you say, it's almost like just a two-tone colour buff, so I think it's good to make the black a bit more interesting. I just want to say, it's like I, 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 for most of that episode, was thinking, hey, we've got our very first multicolour buff, but um, I think, yeah, it's officially black. Uh, anybody else want to chime in on the buff? We're not going to spend 10 minutes talking about buffs. We'll get ripped into that, no doubt. <laughs> I uh, would have liked it to be green, to yeah. have been green. <laughs> the um, unused, uh, what's it case, uh, Palau, that was kind of multicolored. Khaki. Camo. Yeah, Cammy, yeah. That's, yeah. Camo is multicolored, isn't it? Yeah, I'd give you that. That's fair. Fair call. Fair call. Good call, Gross. I like it. Anyway, um, so uh, the interesting thing I found there was when they're all sitting around having a chat and they bring up the, like, oh, so how did the Joaquin vote uh, go down. And then Mike basically just spills it all, like, oh, yeah, no, yeah. this is what happened, this is what happened. Surely, Colin, that is a dumb thing to do in front of an entire group. I mean, Rodney's face, I think, said it all at that point. I I was thinking the opposite, actually. I was thinking that it might have been a smart move, because you have so many different factions so far, and especially with the tribe swap coming late, you don't really know where anybody's coming from, and I was thinking if he had just sort of played it, you know, um, not really going into too much detail, it could have set up for a lot of people talking behind his back and being like, oh, well, Mike's playing a really secretive game. Coming right out and saying it might have actually helped him, especially since he was right at the front of that vote. And you don't really know where a lot of these other people are aligning right now. Hmm. Interesting point, actually. Didn't think about it that way. Paul, what, what do you think? Yeah, I think that if you hadn't, hadn't prepared for it, probably just telling the truth was probably the best thing to do. It's not, it's not something that particularly frames him in any kind of uh, strategic kind of way. I don't think it it paints him as being some kind of strategic mastermind anyway, and I think that if he just tried to cover it up, probably would have looked more untrustworthy. Um, I was also struck by by the fact that no one, including Shireen, didn't look for an an idol clue in that feast. Mm. That was was very interesting. Do you think maybe, given that there were two that were found, that... um, Yeah. But surely there was still one out there on one of those beaches. I guess, because we had yeah. randomly had three in all of a sudden. Well, the Escamecha one, 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 <laughs> yes, one hasn't been found oh, that's right, yet, there were three so tribes. that's Ooh. probably what they're looking for next week. <laughs> good point, good point. Noah, your, your take on Mike's little, uh, you know, honesty pact there? Yeah, I didn't think of it the way Colin and Paul kind of brought it up then, but I also don't think uh, that necessarily makes him smart or anything. I think it's best to just leave it like you like they didn't direct the question directly at Mike. You didn't have to say anything really. You could just say, Oh yeah, we voted them out because then that gives them the other people like, well, Rodney's on the outs. He basically told them Rodney was on the outs. Um, so I'm sure there were a lot of discussions that went on there, but I think the best move with that would just to be not say anything like the whole group, let Dan speak his mind, but, yeah. Food, baby! Um, <laughs> Jared? <laughs> um, Sorry for the impressions, people. I'll apologise to postal workers next week. I didn't think it was sort of too bad either way. I can I can see that um, in some ways I think it was better to just sort of come out with it because, I mean, Rodney surely was going to tell people his opinion of... Um, how it happened. So I think in a way it was sort of kind of better to shut that down instead of everybody kind of just getting a negative view of the vote from, from Rodney. So I think overall it wasn't a, a, a bad move for Mike. Two things we've got to bring up right now. One is a negative, one is a positive. Let's start with the positive. 
because there were two subtle references to two favourites and friends of ours on this show in this episode. The first one involved getting stung and urination. Uh, that, of course, yeah. is Dan getting stung by the jellyfish. And, um, when he, well, he already peed on it. Jen saying it didn't work. She was a lifeguard. Then as he walks off, she read, want me to pee on it? Oh, yeah, she already was, did. She was so keen to do that. <laughs> it would have, the only bit that would have made it better then was if she had have gone, oh, my God, can I Kathy Vavrick O'Brien on your John Carroll? Like... <laughs> no, she's meant to be a super fan. Come on, then, Shireen. That uh, kind of sounds like a Bryant Gumble. What you're talking about? <laughs> yeah. Now, Colin, um, you know, we, obviously we didn't get any complete John Carroll direct reference, but we were all thinking it. Yeah. Even even aside from the the throwback there. I think this is what's been missing from the last couple of weeks, something that was really good in the first few episodes, which is just these random scenes of survival. And I, I, I burst out laughing when Shrin's like, you want me to pee on it? Because like <laughs> she was, like you said, she was so enthusiastic. It, like I, I wish that she had been doing a Kathy where she's running up the beach in slow motion with like a Supergirl cape tagging behind her. But I, I like those little scenes like that, that it's just a little bit amusing and maybe has nothing to do with the game, but it's just a nice break and uh, nice throwback to, to peeing on somebody's foot and a nice throwback to just classic survival survivor. We, we, all we need now is Rosie O'Donnell doing an impersonation of the da 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 The running down there. Well, I'm really wondering, does it, is it these random insignificant moments? Because this is the third or fourth sting moment in this season. I don't and get... it wasn't even the last in this episode. We'll get to that. Well, yeah, I'm just confused as, yeah, they're showing these moments, but why are they showing so many stinging moments? Because I'm sure it happens <laughs> on every season of Survivor. Foreshadowing Noah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're having me thinking there's going to be like a, a couple of weeks down the road, there's going to be previously on Survivor. It's like, stings were rampant on the <laughs> <laughs> beach. Dad's going to walk into a wasp nest. <laughs> Peace, I baby! Think, I don't understand why this I so think it's a, mot- it's a motif running throughout, and then we're going to get a Sue Hawk like uh, Final Trouble Council speech where someone wh- whips out the uh, analogy of stings, people stinging hey, other hey, people. you know what's going to happen. Because we had message in a bottle references last week. We've got keep stings. Sting is a reward. Like, they're going to go see the police lock. <laughs> oh, Wednesday yeah. on two guests. Sting guest stars on an all-new Survivor. Sting. Yeah. The reward it, it, today, music, food, and sting. Oh, didn't we have, we had, um, sting, Mike guest star. ripping off. The scorpion stinger as well. Yes. Come on. Yes. Oh, so much stinging. Oh, <laughs> God. I can't wait till we hear every breath you take on episode 13. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> oh, and then we've got to get Vince in, Vince in to do a bit of a cameo as well because we all know that song's about stalking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be watching you. Jen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the only time Sting has ever been referenced on a Survivor podcast, exclusively on Survivor Oz. Um, now, That's why everyone hates them. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I'm not going to get everybody's opinion of that, because I think we're all dying to talk about a certain tribe name. Now, um, <laughs> when Kai was an Ozlet, she had drafted up a top ten worst tribe names, which is something which I've been planning on finishing... Um, up for a while, but given now that we've had a tribe called America, uh, <laughs> that, that's... I can't even say it without like <laughs> all of it. It's just like seriously. It as soon as it was said, I just it straight away into the head. America, fuck yeah! Like <laughs> Matt Stone and Trey Parker are watching this, watching royalties right now. Um, I don't think yeah. Matt Stone and Trey Parker are watching this. <laughs> Let's hope they are. They're watching it with Sting. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, let's start with you, Jared. Merica. That is now officially a tribe name in Survivor. Mm, makes me sick to the stomach. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. I can't, like, even talk about it. This whole week I was thinking of, of the stupid name they'd come up with combining the three tribe names from beforehand. I was like, it's gonna, that's going to sound like a total mess. And then instead, they come up with something even worse, which I did not think was possible. But there you go. 
<laughs> uh, what, like, S... Escarote. My- S. Magrata. S. Yeah. No, Messiah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Messiah. No, uh, your, your name right now on Skype is America. Oh. Um, but, I mean, one thing I will say this is very appropriate that we have uh, four Australians and a Canadian talking about um, the, uh, <laughs> the name America. Very appropriate. Um, Noah. The first ever Survivor season I saw was Survivor Gabon. And we saw <laughs> what that merged tribe name. And that held a special place in Survivor history as worst merged tribe name ever. <laughs> and just for the celebrations, we didn't have returning players for season 30, but we got to top some records and we topped it. <laughs> no bag is now looking like... No bag is like Barramundi now because this is just ridiculous. <laughs> no bag is excellent. <laughs> <laughs> no bag is the best freaking thing I've heard um, when I've heard America and... I have voiced my opinions on Shireen. I'm not a Shireen fan, but I was completely with her. Like, <laughs> she was spot on in that confessional. I'm so glad they put that in. Like, Haley and Mike loved it, but then Shireen had to be in there. I mean, in Survivor, you don't disagree with anything. If someone says that's what we're naming it, you just go along with it. But, oh my God. Yin Yang, No Bag, Anil Adam, please just. Oh it's, my god, I just, oh, I'm leaving. America. They, they go, America. Worlds, worlds apart backwards, they could have gone with what? Trapper Stellar. Wow, well, that's um, a good one. <laughs> I like that. I love the fact that we had those differing confessionals. We had Haley. Yeah. It's like the Constitution, which is like the religion of America. I love it. But the whole expression, America, is taking the piss out of that. That's the whole point of it. It's not, you're not like saying America Haley. and standing up for the Constitution. You're saying America, pointing out the fact that, yeah, this is, it's supposed to be a piss take of the whole thing. It's supposed to point out the stupidity of some Americans. United by that States of America! Yeah. Australia. 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 Uh, I mean, Paul, I mean, you, you obviously just voiced a bit of an opinion there. I mean, do you have anything else to add on it? Oh, it's, yeah, I just, I thought it was complete, they, it almost seems like it's a blind spot, it's like some kind of social um, awareness that they're, they're lacking in the fact that, that that phrase is not used as a, you shouldn't be proud of that phrase, that's a piss take in phrase. One thing I will say, it's taken 30 seasons for like, complete American patriotism to finally find its way into Survivor, like, yeah. you know, I mean, we've, we've had Texan pride with, like, Colby oh, and Pascal two. with the American flag. Yeah, true, true, but I guess we didn't, you know, get faced with America, like, couldn't, now we... are not like, even in America, couldn't they call it, like, Nick, um... <laughs> Nick. Nick. <laughs> Just call it Nick. Yeah. I kind of stopped mid-sentence there because Let, I didn't want to go any further of what that tribe could be called. Let's call the tribe Nick. Um. Yeah, stop, stop <laughs> Imagine if Max and Shireen were there and they were, like, leading and they just wanted to name it after, like, uh, you know, uh, a, 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 like a survivor that they think needs, you know, we're going to call the tribe Nick Brown. Like, Hockey. <laughs> yeah. Hockey. Dan, Dan Kay. Uh, <laughs> Colin, Colin, you're very close to uh, America. Well, as in you're closer than all well, of us. Well, he's in, in North America. <laughs> you're in North America. Um, your thoughts on... America. I think the fact that we can laugh this hard about it shows that it's it has to be a little bit better than No Bag and Anila Dom. Um, <laughs> it's I, not I'm better just, than No Bag. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that everybody's going to have to adjust their Jan impressions now because it's no longer America. It's now America. <laughs> America. <laughs> I want Jeff Probst to introduce a challenge. Come on in, America! Yeah, I, I noticed that they didn't have the usual scene where Jeff asks if they've named the tribe. They didn't put that in there. I wonder they probably, why. You know, because you can see how that went down. Okay, guys, uh, coming in. What do we name the tribe? Uh, Jeff, we called it America. What the fuck? <laughs> You're fucking kidding me, right? You're fucking kidding me. Right, We're the- trying to have a serious TV show here. <laughs> cut the tape. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, I'll show painted- you, America. <laughs> We've already painted the flag, Jeff. Oh, well, fucking hell. I, I can't remember who said it, and we're giving um, POS credit on this show. I didn't think that would ever happen um, since, like, January, but 
someone said something funny. I'm sorry, I can't credit them. They said uh, Russell Hance must be uh, finally glad that America gets to decide who wins the season. I thought that was quite good. Whoever said that. <laughs> All right, I'll give him that. that. That's pretty good. Yeah, I, 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 it's disappointing this isn't like a starting tribe name because that would be funny. Like if you know Jeff Rose, America wins immunity. <laughs> And Couldn't following have... up is Anada, and here's Ooh Eland coming in the rear. Couldn't they just spy- call it Americana or spice it up, like give it an island feel or something? <laughs> like, um, uh, what's that, um... Just call it Honolulu or something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, from now on, all tribes must be named after a location in America. <laughs> New York! <laughs> uh... San Antonio! <laughs> San Antonio would be a better tribe name than America. <laughs> oh, they called the tribe America. Noah would be a better tribe than America. Can we just pause and think for a second? They called the tribe America. <laughs> now, 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 let's be fair here. Mike called the tribe America. Well, yeah. <laughs> Haley was pretty enthusiastic about it. Well, Haley yeah, was into it too. Sorry, the religion of America um, the constitution. We've got a Sarah Palin reference. That was weird. Well, that was hilarious. <laughs> Isn't that a bit out of I date also... or not really? Hey, Sarah Palin can see Nicaragua from her window, okay? So... I, it's I not also like have to say, a Kevin we... Rudd reference. Sorry. <laughs> we, we didn't have a Jeff Probst reaction, but did anybody else feel that the editors were having a little bit of fun, that even Haley's quote seemed to be almost <laughs> meant to be a little bit humorous? I think that the the show was subtly trying to tell us, like, listen, we think this name's stupid too. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you notice that probably next week when the subtitles will still say "merged tribe." <laughs> <laughs> they refuse to type it. Each week will just be a different past uh, merged tribe. Yeah. We're There's just honouring editing. the thirty seasons of Survivor. There's an editor going, "I'm not fucking typing that. It's a tribe name." <laughs> <laughs> Bring back Moto Margie. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, Moto Margie, those are the days. Um, alrighty, so we get um, at that point. I noticed um, when Mike was, there was a confessional there when Mike was talking about Rodney maintenance. I don't know if anybody caught out that. He was still wearing the blue buff, so they didn't do a very good job there of uh, yeah. editing that into context. Um, I guess that was one there. Uh, but uh, then we got... Uh, Too busy more- editing the mirror, to see. <laughs> <laughs> more random um, athlete. Ooh, Tom Brady references again from Rodney. Um, and then we get to the Survivor Classic Challenge. Um, hang on a pole challenge. I like this challenge. It's a good challenge. Um, yeah. And as you said, Paul, like, yes, don't wear shoes. Come on. Um, Dan falls down. <laughs> and Jeff, you know, this is a challenge where the more you weigh, the more difficult it will be. <laughs> Fuck you, Jeff. <laughs> I would have been like, thanks, Jeff. Just I would have just that. replied, oh, and does height play a factor in that too, Jeff? <laughs> like, does Crystal Cox Probably. just, like, hold the top of the pole? Like, you know, we didn't see Leaf on this challenge. Like, I mean... <laughs> I would love to see Leaf on this. <laughs> oh, Leaf would win. He could just stand on the top, like... Um, That's the rules. Oh, true. Uh, the, the best part of this challenge, though, is this dinghy. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> The first official crotch sting in Survivor history, season 30. <laughs> and, like, Jeff, like, the the awkwardness of it. Yeah, that like, was hard to watch I Jeff. just got stung by something. Whereabouts, Jed? Where my hand is, Jeff? <laughs> She's been stung in a sensitive area. <laughs> <laughs> Are you crying or laughing? <laughs> Both. <laughs> I just wanted Jeff to be like... Medical, come take a look. Or like, oh, just take a look at that. Uh. Oh, age is catching up to Jeff. He's turning into the grandpa here. Oh, uh, it was hilarious. But, um, yeah, no, she did well to hang on. Jeff's been so, awkward this season. This has been an awkward Jeff season. Yeah, well, he's, been, he's been really detached from... Well, like, uh, classic Jeff last... It's weird, because, like, Jeff was on fire last season, yet he hates that kind of season. Loves this season, and he... he oh, no, I thought he was high in Tribal Council. <laughs> he, like, he was he so like, was. Oh, hello, everybody! Oh, 12 of you! Wow! He's like, oh, Tribe Council. I better have a joint before I do this one. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Mr. Burnett, pass me the bong. <laughs> I, I, don't know, I don't know how I had the subtle uh, reference there, but 
does anybody else now really wish that when she had been like, I just got stung, and then he his response would just be, K? <laughs> In my sensitive area, K? <laughs> <laughs> well, my life is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Big woman. <laughs> <laughs> is this bit of Jeff Pro soundboard just play clips over and over and over and over, Jeff? You've got to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jeff. Oh, if he gets too hot, you'd think of uh, no, that. Was a... <laughs> Put the shoes in the cubby. <laughs> Bring back Survivor Live. We thought Survivor Live was bad. These videos have been. Hey, what happened to the emoji stuff. one? That was a. Li- <laughs> <laughs> I just somebody's getting paid to make those. That, that, that was part of their pay rise. Like they've got into the like stop work meetings. All right, it's part of a deal. I want to make emoji videos. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Go editors. Uh, Jerry, you haven't spoken in about five minutes. Uh, what did you think of Jen getting stung on a sensitive area? <laughs> oh, it was funny. Um, just the whole situation, Jeff, Jen, and actually everybody else just laughing at it. And especially sort of like Dan just chiming in with like um, when Jeff's like, is she laughing or crying? And then she said a bit of both. And then Dan's like, yeah, a bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they could have edited Wes in the background, like the cut to Wes. I ate 50 chicken nuggets and just put that random scene in there just for fun. Why didn't we get? Why didn't we get Shirin yelling out? You want me to pee on it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, just oh, cut to Rob. Jen's like, it's close enough. I can cut, do it myself. Cut to Rob says So Jeff, get her some chocolate and peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to make an amalgamation of like a season where every survivor's on it, and they just edit all those scenes together, so it makes it look like one just, big challenge with contestants any, any on the poll. Any reference to those ones where they used to have to like, you know, guess what items were in each other's boxes? And any reference to a box? Um, <laughs> too far? Right? Ben. Okay. <laughs> I'll write a statement. I'm typing now. Uh, <laughs> have we lost Paul and? Uh, Jared, we lost, uh, Jared's back. Hello, Jared. We, we lost Paul. Hey. Eh, all right. Whatever. No loss. Um, <laughs> oh. uh, no, we oh, lost Paul. Paul's back. Hello, Paul. We lost you. Hey, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Joe wins cool. immunity. We should mention that. <laughs> did anybody... Yeah. Oh, I, um, I mentioned one. to Noah before. Did anybody see um, the photo? I don't know how old it is. I randomly saw it online this week. It was of um, Malcolm and Joe together in a bar, and they look like... They look they're the same person. I'm telling you now. It, like, it was, <laughs> I need to find it. It was hilarious. Anyway, Joe's Joe's a bit taller than Malcolm. Yeah, that's it's quite a bit taller. Noticing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a, a typical person to win the first immunity challenge of the merge. Like, it's the woo win. It's just like it's uh, the whatever. Keith Thaney win. Like he wins the. F- <laughs> 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 with the first one after the merge. It's just, uh, and I love how Carolyn yes, called him a son of a bitch. Let me win for my kid, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when Tarzan, um, I'm sorry for bringing a one word Never apologise for one word references, the more the merrier. <laughs> I, I can't remember who wins. I think Alicia wins. He goes, I wanted to win that, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> It was kind of like that, but it sounded much gentler when <laughs> Carolyn said it I over Tarzan. That episode about four days ago. <laughs> oh, Tarzan, more, more references. I've just got that image in my head now of Tarzan when he found the fire. And he was doing that like unga bunga dance, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> 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 or when he gets the cat's panties and puts them on his head <laughs> and the singlet. Oh my god, Tarzan. Love that man to death. Um, <laughs> no, I'm keeping my money. I want to get shocked. Uh, <laughs> Alright, survival worlds apart. Oh, sorry. The tears are flowing tonight. <laughs> anyway, um. We get uh, another interesting mic moment. Was this where we got back to camp and Mike's like, all right, we all know we're going to go off and talk now. Like, I don't know, 
Jared was. Did he handle that? Appro- I, I just there was just something about that that I thought was a bit hoo harry. Yeah, that annoyed me a little bit. Um, yeah, I just didn't need to be said. It's like okay, well, everybody just kind of like naturally go off by yourself, but just to like. Okay, let's all go talk about each other, blah, blah, blah. It was just a bit kind of abrasive. Mm, Colin? Yeah, yeah, I thought the same thing, but the fact that it wasn't really followed up with even a reaction from anybody, I think maybe goes to show what we were saying earlier, that this this cast just is a little bit different and they're not really taking things as personally. Uh, I think if you do that on another season, it probably doesn't work. But Mike seems to be pretty socially aware of everybody, so it, it didn't seem to hurt him for some well, odd reason. Yeah, it's weird. It's like we're in this kind of different era now where it's it's okay to reference Survivor and talk about and basically point out um, things that are going to happen based on strategy rather than just going off and doing them. It's it, you, People are more upfront about it now. Um, so I don't think it hurt him too much i don't think it was even though i mean going back to garrett two only two seasons ago really hurt him but um it didn't really seem to hurt mike at this stage don't we love garrett uh no we (laughs) love garrett oh my best friend no no i do like garrett outside of the game but that mike thing i think that was kind of an insignificant comment i think it was just something the producers or editors put in there to say, all right, now the tribes are about to start strategizing. Like, I don't think it's something to read too much into. And I think, like, people kind of just didn't even pay attention to it, really. So I'm not sure if that's going to play a part in anything, to be completely well, it, honest. It's interesting, kind of, we talked before about the strategy that we had, um, everybody scrambling. I mean, it all basically, in the end, came down to... Uh, targeting Kelly uh, with the um, white collars, which side would they go with? Tyler, he's a little interesting um, bit there with Mike, um, where he was saying, Luke yeah. Luner, I'll go away. And then we got, what, a shot 30 seconds later of Mike massaging Tyler. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I thought it was quite risky, that move, though. I thought, oh, this is, this is going to awaken, or oh, Mike's going to kind of wise up to the fact that Tyler's quite clever and should probably start maybe looking to get him out. I thought it was a bit risky. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm laughing at. Um, sorry, I'm distracted. We're trying to find the Tarzan dance gif and I've got a picture of Leaf jumping off a net. <laughs> ben, sorry. Um, at least he knows how to land on the net, Ooh, probably. Ooh, Courtney Byrne. Ooh. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if anybody else has anything to add on the pre-Tribal Council because I sort of lost my train of thought. If anybody... I think there's a lot... Well, no, it tried be because I was... Council. I'm reading my notes here and I've lost my... <laughs> I'm looking at Leaf in a box. So, like... <laughs> no, we just, just talk. Go. <laughs> you were meant to be hosting tonight, so um, take over. <laughs> I don't really know where to jump in but i do think there's a lot to talk about in terms of that like um just the whole way it played out because i i don't really there was a lot of strategizing but the no uh, the white collar it really did make it seem like tyler was not going to go with the blue collars like i was shocked and then shirin's not even with the white collar so then that adds another spanner in the work um and then the whole Kelly boot, I don't know if anyone wants to clarify on that well, at all. Yeah, Colin, I mean, what, what do you think? I was actually interested in what we didn't see. Um, and, and I think this is one of the things that's making this season different and interesting. Your typical survivor, if you have somebody who's clearly on the outs in their tribe, like we saw with Rodney, Sierra, Sharin those are the people who are the swing votes and that didn't even come into play in this episode. And I was really surprised by that. And I think that just shows how different this season is because there wasn't any talk about, Oh, well, who are they going to vote with? These are the people that could have just gone around and said, you know, uh, my votes up in the air and it didn't happen. So that was really surprising for me. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Um, It's just, I don't understand kind of, what went down really i mean you had sort of will flipping as well and then like i agree with Noah. like it really did seem that tyler was just like well these blue collar people have already burned me why 
should I go back to them? But I mean, I mean it, it's just, I kind of get the feeling that the no collar people just might be a little bit abrasive or it just doesn't, it seems like nobody kind of wants to stick with them. I mean, the really surprising thing for me was, was Will flipping, which I think in the end turned out to be a good move, but just, I mean, he was on the outs of that group, but I just thought that he was just sort of playing along with, oh, yeah, yeah, sort of with Rodney and then with Mike. But then for him to actually flip over, I kind of feel like he definitely must have had more um, to do maybe with uh, Carolyn and Tyler and maybe they, those three sort of discussed it together. Because I think him just sort of flipping with no guarantee that they'd have the numbers, that it could potentially be a tie, surely he, he wouldn't it's, just do it's, that. It's, I don't know, like, I think, Noah, you were saying that people were talking online about it being like a shock that Kelly went home and, and all this. And I think it was you, Jared, who mentioned at the top when I asked you about this episode that it was more of a shock that the white collars sided with the blue collars because I went into that vote sort of thinking Kelly was going, but I thought it was going to come down to the fact that the... <laughs> well, the well you knew. I didn't know officially. I'd sort of briefly skimmed over a tweet, which well, turned out to be true. But... um. I kind of thought it was going to come down to the white collars siding with the no collars to go against the blue collars, and, and it kind of shocked me that in the end it was Kelly going home because Jen well, had a successful idol play. I yeah. think we. I did say that I was shocked the whites didn't go with the no's, but now that I think about it, one thing we've completely glossed over, which I don't think we should have, was... Rodney had this out-of-nowhere Final mm. Four plan, which consisted of him, Kelly, uh, Carolyn, and... Mm, can't remember the Dan, fourth Mike, one. Will. Will. Dan, <laughs> one of them, Will, yeah, Will. Yeah. Definitely not Dan, it was Will. So, that makes me think, if Carolyn went with the blue collar, the only thing I can get from that, other than following Tyler, is the fact that she's playing up to the Rodney Final Four and that that's why she went rather with the no collars. Plus, yeah. cause there was a conf- com- Kelly confessional saying that Carolyn hates the no collars, which, I mean, Carolyn can speak for herself, but I'm sure <laughs> Kelly wasn't everyone. Sorry, I'm just... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I'm Kelly just, wasn't lying. I'm just not familiar with the words yeah. Kelly and confessional in a sentence. It's just something in Survivor that <laughs> yeah. doesn't fit I, well I, there. Go, Paul. I think we have to look at both Tyler and Carolyn, what kind of players they are. And they seem like the kind of players who need to be constantly reassured. And I think the blue-collar people were doing that way more than the no-collar people. The no-collar are probably just laid back, just thinking, oh, yeah, they said they're going to vote for us. They'll vote for us. But both Carolyn and Tyler, they seem like they really just needed someone constantly in their ear telling them, yep, yep, we're good, we're good. And and that's that's they got it from the blue-collar Is that, is that white-collar, like, in real life? In a way, because like as much as white collars are in, in control, I, I still think people in that position like to Constant yeah they like to be told yeah. that they're in control. I think the um, white collars, all three of them, even though Shireen voted differently, I think those three people are safe for a long time in the game. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're going. It's going to be gunning for the blues, gunning for the no's. I think the whites are in a good position but not a great position because Carolyn and Tyler don't seem to have any allegiances which is good for the time being but it makes it difficult to get to the end if you've got no one strong with you so I think they're not going to be targeted anytime soon but it could be trouble in the long run for them if they don't get something solid going Um, well I kind of agree with Noah uh, but this is a season where I mean, as Carolyn and Tyler pointed out, this is a season where people with strong allegiances are being picked off so quickly. And I think they're playing it smart uh, by not revealing their alliance. But it, they could also be thinking in the same terms that they don't want to get too tight with anybody else for the same reason. Um, I, I completely agree that the, the blue collars are already self-destructing and they've made themselves the target in the game. The no callers, just based on the fact that there's four of them and that they are really tight, that works. The white caller's best chance is to uh, stick together and, and to bring in Sharin. I'm very interested to see whether she will eventually side with Carolyn and Tyler because 
they would have it made if they did that and if they were able to keep their alliance under wraps. They're in a good position based on the fact that nobody really thinks that any of them are Do aligned together. Do you feel together. that this is the, the result in the end, obviously, c- comes down to an, an idol being played? Is this similar to a, a Malcolm, Eddie, Reynolds situation where they've won for one round, but it's just going to put bigger targets on their back next time around? No? Paul? No, yeah, go I ahead. think. I th- you, oh, sorry. I, I think possibly, I think that it could be, but then again, I think Will's going to be probably ticked off the fact that they lied to him and but told him to vote for Haley and they all like... Jen- <laughs> Yeah, it's strange. But oh, I still, I still let's still talk about Will. Come on, Will. <laughs> I don't know. I think it was probably a smart move. I mean, he, he thought the numbers were going to be there. They were there, but then they lied to him, obviously. So he's, he's going to go wherever the numbers are, and that's, it's not necessarily a bad move. Mm. I, mean, I think Will's the worst player in this game at the moment. I don't, I don't think he is. No. I, I think that he, he's keeping his head low I and doing what... I think he completely votes emotionally, and like it goes back to the Vince vote where he flipped when he could have had a solid three alliance. He flipped and made himself fourth. I think... He's going to be just doing this, going wherever the votes, and now he's been exposed. So the no collars aren't going to trust him, and the blue collars told him to vote Haley, so he's out of the loop there. Um, Will doesn't win this game, and he's completely out of the loop with everyone. He's got no one, and not in a good way like Carolyn and Tyler. Will he survive? <laughs> no. I yeah, I, I think he's doing all right. I, I think that he's keeping uh, his head down, but but I think that that first vote the one that he voted out vince was basically obviously it was quite emotional uh, someone was coming for him and he tried to get them out it probably wasn't the best move that he did but i mean put yourself in that situation you probably if someone says they're, they're gunning for you you probably would do the same kind of thing in that situation we we don't know but i i don't necessarily think that this was a terrible move by him the, the numbers weren't there and so he was going to where the numbers were um and, yeah, we, we saw for next week anyway, Rodney talking to... Who was he talking to? Was mm-hmm. he talking to Will again? Yeah, and so Rodney's obviously jumping the gun. Um, they basically could have had it made. They would have had seven or whatever to their well, four. Well, Will might up. be playing up to this Final Four thing along with Carolyn, which could I, explain the flip. I guess, I guess one yeah. thing, though, is that we don't really have a super solid alliance of anybody. Like, I mean, we've got a couple of little... Well, the blue collars minus Rodney. But, but like, even there, like, there's fractures there. I don't think they're fractures. And I that's think... only three people. Yeah, but, like, I, I, I think, think we've got, like, mini groups. We've got, we've got mini groups. It's not like... I mean, usually at this point we've got, like, a... You know, usually at the merge vote, we get... Yeah, okay, you could argue you had that, because, again, it was an idol that really it, it, it eliminated somebody. But we're seeing then Rodney going next week to try something. And, you know, again, you can't always go on a preview, because, of course, sometimes they're, they're teasers and they turn out to be nothing. But, like, I don't know. It's 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 a, it's a an interesting season in that it's... it's Yeah, there are people that you can say, oh, this person's going to win, this person's going to win. But, I don't know, like, it seems that in the last few seasons, we've had people that are... Most people are saying are going to win, and of course the editing has done that great in a way that it's turned out that those people didn't win. But I don't know. To me, there is no absolute definite winner, if that makes sense. I think there's a short list of around four or five Mm. people. Yeah. Like, Dan's not winning, Sierra's not winning, Will. I don't know about that. I think that there's no definite loser either. I think that I could oh, just about I think see... there's some definite losers. I don't know. I could see just about anyone left in the game winning in some kind of scenario. I think, you think there's... Sierra will be the winner of Survivor Worlds Apart? <laughs> hang on, hang on. Back up, back up, back up. Is think... somebody called Sierra in this game? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I think that with a, a bolstered edit in the coming weeks, she might. She could still. And it's, it's not as if she's a complete write-off. It's it's not um, I don't know what's a good example of someone who had no no chance of winning. It's not Morgan from basically. Oh, now oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> hey Ben, you shut up, up did not. <laughs> Once we got to the merge, though, Morgan had basically resigned. Essentially, she doesn't she have to do again. anything. She can just lay there and do yoga. All right, that's <laughs> all she needs to do. Um, <laughs> yeah. Jared, um, uh, I mean. Yeah, kind of on that notion of the the winning, like who's winning the edit and all this sort of stuff. I mean, do you kind of see kind of what Paul says there that perhaps there's anyone can win, or do you kind of see Noah's viewpoint that there are a few that really aren't winning this game? I think some are looking more likely than others, but I would agree that I at this point I'm not really 
discounting anybody. I think just it's the first episode of the merge. It's it's quite an early merge to being at twelve. So like, there's still plenty of episodes for people to sort of build up a run sort of towards that end to make some moves and sort of um, build a resume. And just for the editing to to show them in a different light as maybe sitting back and and then um, coming forward and making those moves at the merge. So I'm not I haven't really sort of discounted anybody at this oh. point in time. I think that, uh, like everybody else has said, it's a very open game and not necessarily based on what we've seen so far. I don't think what we've seen so far shows that Dan wins this game, but I was watching the show last night and I was thinking, based on other seasons, could I see them turn around the edit on Dan in a way that's not so obvious and suddenly he does become a plausible winner and I see that as a possibility. I think even more so with Will self-preservation is one of the most underrated strategies in Survivor. Look how far it carried Eliza. Uh, now, you, you take self-preservation the way that Eliza played it, the way that Will played it with the Vince vote, and you put it in the hands of a guy who's as charismatic as Will, and I think Will has a really good shot at winning if, if things turn around in the game for him. And because we have so many different factions, and the numbers are so even, and that's what's really helping this season as opposed to the other three tribe seasons is that it really could go anyway. And if you're the one guy who's on the out, but you've only got a group of three people here, a group of four people here, a group of three people here, I mean, you're a valuable player mm. suddenly. It's interesting. And, like, oh, and I mean, going back to the Richard Hatch um, uh, recap the other day, and, and I think we brought this up last week anyway on the show, but um, the editing of recent seasons, I feel, has just improved so well. And, like, I'd probably say 28, 29, 30, like... You know, the, the, the editing has has gotten to a point where there's no obvious winners. And, like, yeah, people would argue, I guess, that Tony was an obvious winner. But, again, think about watching that live when that was on. None of yeah. us thought he was winning mm-hmm. based on the character yeah. he was. It was almost, it was kind of so obvious that he couldn't be the winner because it was, he we were getting yeah. so much airtime, we are thinking, there's no way yeah, this guy he, can yeah. win. So it was almost I, a reverse. I feel like most people agreed that the winner would be Tony, Spencer, or Tasha. So I don't know if that's completely... Heaps of people were thinking but, but, LJ yeah, but, 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 but so my, long. Well, yeah, but I think LJ my point well. is that, like, yeah, I see what you're saying, Noah, and, like, again, if you look at the overall confessionals for a man to get 90, Six confessionals. Of course, you're going to say that's an obvious win, but like, I mean, from my personal perspective, to me, it was kind of like a Russell edit that he was such a character that um, you know he wasn't going to win, and like, it really does take a second watch of Kagayan to just appreciate the master that Tony was in that season. But again, that's that's. I th- I think. Um Kagayan is a far superior season up to oh, this point. Um, obviously, there's a lot yeah. more. In saying that, I think World Apart has done a almost better job at editing because there are all these characters. Like, Kagiyama was brilliant, but we had the... And I know you thought he was winning, but sometimes you have moronic opinions. But, um, <laughs> like, Thank we you. had... Oh. Yeah, well, wait till you hear what I said. You thought Jeremiah might be the it winner. It was my pre had... pick, come on. As Paul, as Paul also mentioned, Morgan, and we had the Wu and the Cass. So while I think Kayan up to this point was a better season, and this was the Sarah Lucina vote out, which is one of the best episodes in Survivor, but um, yeah, I just think this season has done a better job in terms of editing of who were players and all that. So I'll give it credit I in just, that. I just, I just think that, like, you know... <laughs> People again always talk about the you know the different eras of Survivor you know the the early the middle the whatever and you know at the end of season thirty we're going to have a real distinct like easy to say the first ten the middle ten and the the later ten and we're we're going to plan on doing um in the the mid season break before thirty one um sort of a, a a retrospective Oz cap where it's kind of like Oz capping the first thirty seasons as a collective episode we haven't sort of come up with a structure yet um but. I guess we can maybe look at there, but if if you were to look at the last 10 seasons of Survivor and look at a, a collective group of, say, three in a row of editing in terms of guessing the winner at a certain point, I, I would strongly point out that 28, 29, and 30... And, I mean, again, it, it's maybe early days of 30 because, again, we could get to the end of this season and go, oh, it was so obvious that Will was going to win. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert. Um, but I don't know. I just think that if you were to collectively look at it, like this is the three strongest 
groupings of a season in the last 10 seasons of not knowing the winner at this point. Anyway, that's a weird, weird way of putting it. One, uh, ra- I Thank agree, you, ben. Noah. I appreciate your agreeance. Um, random uh, reference to a former contestant, which was very subtle and not really a random reference, but I thought it was a random reference. Uh, when Jeff brought up, "Hey, there's twelve of you," and Will says, "Oh, Jeff, you might even get voted out tonight." That to me was a Greg Buis reference. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but Jeff was high. Yeah, like, Jeff what? was like, "Fuck, I better play my idol." <laughs> I would have tried harder in that challenge if I knew that. I wouldn't have stepped down for the A Jeff hamburgers. confessional. I really wasn't worried coming into tribal tonight, but now Will brought up my name. <laughs> um, see, I'll go tally the votes, grabs the votes, and scuttles off into the yeah, dark. Yeah, we, we got some random ice pick references, chainsaw references. Oh, uh, yeah, this that made me cringe, the... Um... The Dan thing. Does anyone else get the impression that he's just really playing up for the yeah. sound bites? Any chance yeah. he gets, he's trying to shove it in there, and it's just so right. try hard. We got to and our it's lame. and there was nothing there, <laughs> baby. Yeah, Food! just out of nowhere. Yeah, this it's not a ch- it's not that it's a chainsaw yeah. or something. <laughs> you know, that was just so forced. It just didn't need to be. Sa- he didn't need oh. to say that. I was thinking the same thing in the the, the immunity challenge. Go back a bit. When it came down to, he's like, old versus young, man versus woman. He's going on and on forever. I'm like, <laughs> when is he going to get to, like, beard versus no beard? <laughs> like, shave legs versus not shave legs. Stung vagina versus non-stung vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sensitive area. Um, <laughs> that's what uh, mommy and daddy call it. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, I like... I know, Noah, you talked up about, like, Max and, and Shireen sort of playing up for the camera, and I can see that, but, like, I love Dan, don't get me wrong, I think I'm, uh, am I the only remaining Dan fan? I know we all loved him pre-season. Oh, I love Dan. You love Dan? Okay, good, all right. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, he's definitely, it's, it's kind of like, I love Rupert, but I think, like, Rupert, season three, season four, you know, and yeah, I but went it's not into... you love Rupert, it's, oh, yeah, you love Rupert. He's just Rupert doing that I, Rupert I know, thing. I fucking love Rupert. But, like, you know, Rupert's like, and then we went into yeah, Tribal Council, love... and then it got tough, and I <laughs> felt bad. And then my shoes were undone, <laughs> and I tied them up. And then Laura got voted out. It just, it just ripped my heart out. <laughs> like, Next returning player season. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Leaf was voted. <laughs> My closest ally. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell voted for <laughs> Leaf? <laughs> Cass! How about Leaf? Uh, t- uh, Rupert, I'm down here. Oh. <laughs> Rupert, I'm in your beard. Thought you were voted out. I couldn't see you. <laughs> oh, that would be the best alliance ever. Rupert and Leaf. <laughs> That would be Rupert and Ru- uh, Rupert and Rudy all over again. Can I share your box tonight, Leaf? <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't think you'll fit, Rupert. I can fit in there, Leaf. I'm not the little fat boy that I once was, Leaf. <laughs> I lost weight. Thanks, Jenny Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we love Rupert. Is he doing a recap this season? No, he's not. Good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, bring back Rupert and Laura. Do a Rupert. Leaf and Rupert recap. Oh, just a Leaf recap. Why can't we do a Leaf recap? Well, you can. You're the boss. <laughs> not anymore, it seems. <laughs> So anyway, Kelly goes home. I lose more money. Thanks, Survivor World. I swear, like... I, I've noticed that all my ponies... I've never had a male pony. Sexist. Um, yeah, I won money this season on So. Like, I got 15 bucks back for a first boot. But, my, my like, Noah, you always say your pony goes around about the same point. Like, um, I mean, I had, I had Marissa who went early, but then I had Ke- uh, Kelly who kind of just went just before the merge. I had Morgan who just went just after the merge. And now I've had Kelly who's gone just at the merge. I've kind of got this area that they always bloody well go in. I blame Jen. Um, I think I, I have the same. I'm, uh, oh, I've only had two ponies, but they've both been the last person before the merge. Mm. Da- Dale was the last person before the merge. And he was, yes. Yeah, so Dale and Joaquin. Damn them. Bugger. Um, before we jump too far, I think we've already mentioned it, but I think we need to talk a bit about the idol. 
Yeah, well, we've, we've got to mention. I mean, like any time an idol gets played successfully. Well, I've heard someone, a lot of people on the internet saying this was the best idol play ever, and someone mm. even said this was the best move in Survivor history. So well, I'd like to know. We what have to talk about Jeff, this. I'm Jeff Probst weed they're smoking. Like, I mean, yeah. like. I, I I love a good moment like this. I mean, I, I fucking love Jen. Like, I'm so glad she's safe. I don't give a shit if I've lost money on Kelly because I'd rather Jen stay in the game more than Kelly because I love Jen. Love me some Jen. But, um, yeah, like, best move? Come on, Colin. But, Colin but, like, yeah, I don't... Paul, if, anyone, is, what are they sorry, is this Is this completely results-based? Because I still don't think that she played it the best way she possibly could have. Well, even though I think that Tony, even though his didn't come off, he still maximised the possible, his chance of it paying off long-term, the way that he played it. I think his play of that idol was better than... Yeah, Malcolm's. I'm not sure Jen has the majority after that play. Yeah, I, yeah. I still feel like yeah. she's in the minority, I think, but a, yeah. a lot more leeway. I think it's now, put it like... Cause I, I, I was talking to Noah when I was watching it, and obviously Noah had already seen it, but I was kind of saying, like, oh, Jen's so winning this game if Kelly goes home, because that's that was on my notion of, oh, the white collars are going to stick with the no collars. But, yeah, based on the way this is gone down like to me this has put more of a target on jen's back because they're gonna be like well hang on a minute she had an idol what the fuck she saved herself what the fuck well you know we need to get rid of her now uh, i mean colin yeah. your take on jen's play and um, and again comment please on the oh this is the greatest move in the history of survivor well in order for it to be the greatest move in the history of survivor it would have to be a move nobody had done before <laughs> and this move has been done several yeah, times Jonathan before Penner did this a few weeks uh seasons ago. a few weeks ago yeah <laughs> but I think I will agree that it was one of the most entertaining idol plays that comes down to how Haley and Jen reacted to it. You know, Mm. sometimes we get a reaction with somebody very quiet. They were like cheering every single time a vote was read for her. And that's what made this more entertaining. It was an entertaining idol play. It's not a revolutionary move. Um, I don't know where she's going to be next week. She could be in the majority. She could be in the minority. She probably did put a bit of a target on her, but it saved her. So it was a good move for her. Um, but I, I still say I just love the reactions that they had as these were being read. Jared? Um, I wouldn't call it the greatest move, but, um, I mean, I think obviously it was smart. It saved her, and I did love the whole um, reading of the votes with the kind of like that classic they show, like that Haley vote first just yeah. to, like, freak them all out. But um, is this the most votes that have been voided by a single idol play? That uh, Russell Hans. Oh, let me. Yeah, that's. I'm that's not really saying that's true. I'm just chucking that out. As I, a, yeah, well, that could be a point. I'll I'll see how many Russell I activated, but he had at least six against. So him. Jen I had think, seven, um, did she not? Oh, yeah. She had a lot of votes. Okay, yeah, she did have seven. Yeah. Okay, just keep talking. Um, I'll, I'll see how many Russell had. Keep talking. Uh, what yeah. we can argue that she um, is going to create a more of a target on her back. But I guess if you really look at it, she got seven votes. So she's already got the target. I don't know if uh, playing that idol is putting more of a target because they tried to get her out in the first place. So Russell had seven as well, but that was at a tribal council of 11. Um, yeah. So obviously, obviously, Jen had to play it, otherwise she was going home. Mm. But my, my point was before the vote, when she didn't know, it could have been Haley, it could have been her, before the vote, she could have basically cancelled out those two options by pulling it out, saying, I've got the idol. They would have all talked among themselves. Obviously, they can't vote for her now because she's going to play the idol. And then she plays it for Hayley after the vote. That's but risky, think, though. That's very it's, risky. It's, it's not that's as risky as letting it... That's not a 50-50. I think that's, that gives you more than 50-50. 50-50 is saying, I'm going to just play the, vote, the idol for me afterwards because it could be you or it could be Hayley. That's a 50-50. With yeah, this, but it gives it's a hundred percent if she plays it. But not not necessarily long term because they, they could still vote out Haley and then vote her out next week. All right, ranking season two. This will come up again. <laughs> <laughs> veto, veto. <laughs> um, the other thing you brought up, Ben, or we all brought up, really, <laughs> not putting it on you, um, that why didn't they vote? Mike, um, I've that got a bit Paul. of a theory I'll give on Paul this. Credit. That well, yeah, funny. I think we were all thinking why. I was thinking that, like, why didn't they vote Mike? Yeah. Um, my theory on that would be that um, Kelly was apparently really close to Carolyn, 
and Kelly kind of had relationships with both tribes and they I guess they're splitting up the power couple between her and Mike and the, the fact that she has relationships with everyone in the game and maybe that's a credit to Mike's game that he's going kind of under the radar and he's not an obvious Jeremy Josh kind of person to vote out. I, I I'd love to hear people's opinions. Well, I understand that and I see that and... I don't know, it's it's tricky, because I guess at the end of the game it's easy to analyse, but I don't know, it, it kind of goes back, and I know we talked about this in the rankings cast as well, but it, it goes down to, say, like, when um, the whole Malcolm, Eddie Reynolds one, I mean, my argument would be take out Cochran, not Philip, but again, that's a whole different kettle of fish. Like, it's it's kind of, yeah, like, I can see both sides to it, but I if I was in that, like, Mike, to me... He has connections with the whole, like, I mean, you know, Rodney is back with him. Um, you know, people seem to like Mike just as yeah, much as I like Yeah, but we're watching this from an outside view, though. Yeah, I, I understand. I don't know. Colin, I mean, what, what do you have to add on that? I think it was partly the, the fact that Mike is very well liked. And, you know, it's hard to, to get a read on Kelly because we haven't seen a lot of her this season. And what I was thinking was that it was probably more to do with that, that Kelly maybe just hadn't connected with as many people. If we haven't seen a lot of her on TV and we've seen a lot of everybody on TV, then chances are she maybe didn't have as strong connections. Um, I don't know if it would have been a good idea. I mean, you take out, they know that there's a chance that if you, you know, if the, the idol play works and everything that you're still, as we've been saying, they're still not going to be in the majority. Do you want to take out a guy like Mike, who's very well connected and that's going to anger a lot more people or take out somebody like Kelly who might anger one or two people. Hmm. Jared? Um, I think, it, to me, it would kind of make more sense for them to take out Mike, but I think also you have to think they they probably, uh, in the back of their minds, thinking about the potential of sort of the idol from the blue-collar camp, and Mike is somebody who's a lot more likely to have that than Kelly, so I think kind of that factors into it too. You want to vote for somebody a little bit unexpected on that first um merge tribal council because that's really a point in time when idols have a significant chance of showing up. Paul, I know you sort of talked a little bit about it before. I don't know if you want to add anything more on. Yeah, I, I still just think Mike is so much better at pulling people together. Mike is a person that approaches other people. I don't think I've seen Kelly once approach someone else. She's always had someone else come to her. So she's kind of an outsider. I think that Mike is the kind of glue holding everyone together. So it's if they maybe they didn't pick up on that. Maybe they didn't have enough time, but that, to me, would have been the, the perfect move to just break that up, and I, I don't think those people would have been able to stay together without Mike. See, see Galoo was a good tribe name, unlike fucking America. <laughs> Galoo. Um, is Kelly the least significant merge boot since Michael Jefferson, oh. if we're counting... If we're counting Jeremy as the merge boot and not Julie, um, because... The merge boots lately, they've been these massive characters, so it's like, oh yeah. my god, merge episode. They've voted out this massive character, like, I'm thinking Josh, oh yeah, sorry, Josh, not Jeremy. Uh, Josh, Sarah Lucina, um, RC, uh, who was in Aris. Uh, Michael, uh, what's his name? Michael Snow, maybe not so much, but um, Aris, yeah. Aris in Bloodverse Winner. Yeah, who Ka- was a big Karine character. in Caramon. Oh, God, don't you bring her name up, Paul. You're not a <laughs> fucking don't. Don't. Uh, yeah, it, it was Corinne, but Michael was the jury member. Yeah. But yeah, Corinne was the first merge. Yeah, and then we've got Kelly. So I was more expecting perhaps Jen could have went home because she was the bigger character. Mm. And we're not used to these kind of... I don't want to say she's insignificant, but these insignificant but, characters. But Jonas... Was Jonas not the first... Jonas was One World. Oh, yeah, it was Jonas. And yeah, he, was Jonas. he wasn't that much more than Michael Jefferson. Oh, yeah. He was, he was a bit better than Michael but, Jefferson. But, 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 a little bit. Look, no, you and I were talking about this off air. Let's not... I, I would... Jonas and Michael have their merits, like... <laughs> no, I'm not saying... <laughs> no, I know, I know what you're saying, I know what you're saying. It's just... Who was... It's just interesting, these ha- massive... Ca- yeah, sorry. South yeah. Pacific was Jim, was it not? Redemption? No, it was uh, Keith. Aussie, Keith. Keith. Oh, these Redemption <laughs> Islands throws me off. Um, Redemption... Redemption Island was Matt. 
Oh, fuck yeah, they throw you around there. Nicaragua yeah. was ma... No, Alina. Um, yeah, even Alina was a and, bit of a character. I mean, Coach, no, she... Coach was first. <laughs> <laughs> Alina and character. Hmm, never heard those words in a sentence before. Um, that was JT in um, Heroes vs. Yeah, because Coach was, Coach was jury but not in the merge. Um, yeah. Yeah, anyway, see, we... JT was one of the biggest characters. <laughs> Who was Brad Barassa? Samoa was Eric. Yeah, yeah, he was one of the bigger characters. Token <laughs> Sheens was Joe Doodle. No, Brendan. Yeah, Brendan. Brendan. Brendan the dragon. The biggest character. Gabon. Oh, Dan just missed out. Oh, fucking hell. Well, Marcus, Marcus... was the first jury member, but he wasn't Charlie the first Charlie was, was Charlie. Um, yeah. Micronesia was Eliza. Uh, or just, no. Are we going to um, go through all this? <laughs> Apparently. Uh, you know, fuck it. We've we, we got, we got more important things. We got, what did you oh, game sorry, me? Someone had to say, to say I'm Yes, sorry. all right, all right. Um, all right, so, yeah, bye-bye, Kelly. Um, that was a good chat about all that. But um, just quickly, because uh, it was one thing I want to talk about. I want to try out a new game, which is going to go terribly. Oh. Um, confessionals. <laughs> now, this isn't the, quote, official count. It hasn't been updated on the main page. I, I listened to the... Uh, Worlds Apart, Oz Topsy from the week I wasn't here a couple of weeks ago and uh, I finally listened to it where apparently, Noah, you thought I had Nina in my top three. I had her at fifth. Uh, (laughs) 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 And you you were bagging me out for my official count reference, but whatever. Uh, So according to the confessionals, um, Mike and Ronnie had seven, Tyler had five, Carolyn four, Dan, Jen and Kelly three, Haley, Sharin, two apiece. I swear Sharin had more than that. Joe and Will on one. Uh, Sierra, who? Uh, zero. Um, so, yes, again, not quote official. Um, pony reference. Yeah, my pony's gone. So I've yeah. got none left. J- Bloody Julian still got two left in it, the prick. Uh, <laughs> and Jimmy's still in it. Jimmy, go away. <laughs> Come Jimmy on. always wins. Jimmy's got Mike. Ah, oh. Jimmy's just rolling around in women and Tim Tams <laughs> with his winning money. That's how Living he affords his Tim Tams, is scamming money off the Oslets. <laughs> <laughs> Let- Jimmy, why do you always win? <laughs> Jimmy, stop winning. Uh, stop <laughs> Paul, you're out. Um, Colin, you're still got Joe, so you're you're still all right there. How are you feeling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm happy for now. All right, Jared, you had Vince. You still recovering from that? <laughs> yeah, tragic. <laughs> what what could have been that misfit alliance is what this season is missing and needed. Bloody will uh, and Nina <laughs> and Noah. You've still got Carolyn, so uh, shot. yeah, you'll be fifth again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Third time in a row. Now, power rankings in terms of uh, myself, Noah, Jeremy, and Val. Um, I had... Now, Jer- it's me. Well, it is you. I yeah, <laughs> it is definitely you. But Jeremy, uh, of course, has had Kelly as his winner since, like, day one. <laughs> he finally budged on her and put her it's at Sandra three. and Reed all over it. <laughs> um, Val had her at six. I had her at five. And, Noah, you get the point. Because uh, you had her at ninth, you were the closest. So Jeremy still leads on six. Val on four. You and I tie on three apiece for our preseason rankings. Um, for dear old Not- Kelly, um, I'll straight away say Jared, you didn't get it. Because uh, tell us why you didn't get it, Jared. <laughs> Because clearly Kelly was winning this season, yes. and what happened? <laughs> that was your pick to win, so uh, sorry, you're still on zero. Um, I had her at fifth. Actually, no, I had Nina at sixth, so mm. um, Kelly at fifth. No, you had her at sixth, so you don't get yeah. the point. Joppy had uh, her at six. Doesn't count. Yeah, he's, he's gone now. Um, Paul, you had her at second boot. Yeah. Um, Colin, you obviously didn't have any, so that means that... Uh, Julie and Rossi both get a point because Rossi had her at 14th, so two away. Julian had her at 10th, so two away. So that means that, Jared, you're the only one yet to get a point now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and tell him how you're doing on the Amazing Race as well. <laughs> oh, who's, who's leading? Paul, oh, you're still leading. You've still got... Oh, this is yes. the worst TV season for you, Jared, ever. <laughs> I swear, like, last season I got one point, or maybe two, and, like, I didn't think I could possibly do worse, but so far it's all looking good. You're Nadia Anderson. 
in 2014. <laughs> <laughs> first boot, first boot. You've probably got Bergen and Kurt going next on Worlds Apart, <laughs> based on your ranking. Oh, I like Bergen because I've talked to Bergen. Um, <laughs> well, I've talked to you. Yeah. <laughs> Good on you. Do you say you don't like me? Um, I, no, I never said anything. I just said I talked to you. So, yeah, Paul's leading on four. Noah, you've got three. Uh, Joppy and myself are on two. Uh, Julian and Rossi on one, and Jared uh, zero. Um, <laughs> so next week in eleventh, who have we got? Um, I have got Tyler. Don't think I'm getting a point there. No, you might. You're in with the shot. You got Sierra. There you go. Possible. Maybe. Um, Paul, you have got Tyler as well. Uh, Julian has Tyler as well. Uh, um, well, you never know. Yeah, it could happen. Joppy had Sierra. None of us have original here. Rossi has got Joaquin. Well, he's fucked. Um, and Jared, you've also got Sierra. Wow. Yeah, you're not getting a point, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, damn it. Tyler is 100% excellent. safe next week. Guaranteed. <laughs> Uh, okay, now, uh, what a try that we, there was a topic oh. we want to talk about, but we'll, we'll do that next week, we've, we've gone a bit over time today, so we'll do that when we're on a live episode, um, no, actually no, we're going to close out with this game, we'll do the questions first and the hashtag, because this, this is a, a closing out game, uh, alright, questions, <laughs> tip to win, survive <laughs> worlds apart, ball. Oh, I'm still going to, uh, I really, really want to stick with my pre-game pick, but it's, it's becoming more and more difficult. I'm just going to stick with it because I still feel like this season is just could go any way. Um, so I'll yeah I'll stay with uh, with Joe, Colin, Carolyn, uh, Jared. Oh no, sorry, no, Jared, you're last. Sorry, no. I'm not going to stick with my preseason pick. Oh, but so might win. <laughs> Outcast twist. Um, hey, how cool would that I'm be if that say, happened? <laughs> bring back Wack in um, and Vince. I'm going to say Jen can't dance. We'll win. Uh, uh, Jared. Uh, Tyler. Dark Horse, Jared. Hmm, Will. Noah. Uh, oh, uh, I'm just going to say, let's just say, uh, Hayley for the second time. Paul. Uh, toss up between Jen and Shireen. Colin. I want to say Mike, but just to be bold, I'm going to say Dan. Ooh, wow, very bold. Um, who's next to go, Noah? Um, let's just say... I'd hate it if it happened, but let's just say Rodney. Paul. Oh, no. I've been tipping Rodney for ages, so I'm going to change it up. And now he's probably going to go, but I'll say Mike. Surely, at least if Rodney goes next week, he'll be, on the, he'll be in the jury, at least. So, um, yeah. Colin? Uh, I don't know if he'll be able to dodge a bullet with the target he has, so I'm going to say Joe. And Gerard. Joe. Now, I, I noticed in the uh, episode three, Oz Topsy, you know, you're like, oh, Ben never asked a question after the first week. Uh, who, who are you playing most like? Now, do I do you want me to ask that every week? I mean, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. No, I, I generally ask it once and then... I feel like it changes because we saw Rodney in a lot of a different light after week one than we did by week seven. So. Well, feel free to yeah, answer That's up it. to you. Noah, okay then, who out there is playing most like how you would play then? Um, Vince. <laughs> uh, it's probably like, I don't know, just a random person like Sierra. So it's not Dan anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Foo, baby! Yeah, it, it, it probably is Dan because I love food. Paul? Yeah, it would depend on what situation I was in, I guess, but probably like Mike, really, trying to bring people together. Probably would backfire, though. That's a good, that's a good movie, like Mike. Like Mike. That's not a good movie. That wasn't a good movie. It had Michael Beach in it. He was in Third Watch, whatever. Uh, <laughs> you know, a little so Bow Wow funny. in it or something? A little Bow Wow? Well, any movie with little Bow Wow in it yeah. is a winner. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think you just say something's good if anyone brings up a movie. Well, I can't say, like, like my, well, that was a shit movie. <laughs> well, you can. <laughs> Can we bring up Phil and o Fishers again? Because it's Good Friday tomorrow, so like I feel like Phil and o Fishers. Uh, everyone, it's... go out and buy your Phil and o Fishers. <laughs> they nearly, they nearly had an "I'm loving it" reference in the challenge with Joe. Did they? 
Yeah, he said he's, he he came close. He's, he said, I love it. Oh, okay. Which yeah. I just took well, McDonald's, McDonald's straight away. Survivor Oz, doing it again, putting it out there. <laughs> I just want to say one of my favorite quotes in the history of Survivor Oz came from Noah last week. <laughs> Feel it, I fish. Boo! <laughs> I don't Sorry. remember that. I'll go back and listen to it. I, it was just the most random one with Noah. You're just like, Philodo fish, boo! <laughs> well, no one likes a fucking Philodo fish. <laughs> hey, we hey. had them since 1997 L- stocked L- in the back of Kingston McDonald's. Louise and I were talking about getting McDonald's on Good Friday as we all like go and pay our respects and stuff. And Louise is like, well, I'm going to get a Philodo fish. And. <laughs> Pay, pay your respects. It's not Anzac Day. What are you doing? Oh, about? I don't know. What's the correct <laughs> terminology for Good Friday? I'm not religious. I don't know. I'm having beef sandwiches. I, I've, I've already made my lunch tomorrow. Oh. I've coated it in ham. So, like, <laughs> I'm a rebel. Uh, uh. Colin, tomorrow. Uh, fuck, what are we doing? Um, player, who's playing most uh. like Colin Hilding? It's a weird combo, but a cross between Carolyn and Will. Very weird combo. <laughs> wow, okay. Jared. Um, probably somebody more background, um, who's frequently lost, um, <laughs> Haley, I'd say. Ah, uh, Haley. Oh, you're going to say Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, I still want to be in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Uh, all right. Hashtag for this episode of Survivor and hashtag for episode of Survivor Oz. Start with you, Jared. Oh, do you always put me first on this? And when I when I want to be last, I'm first. Um, Life's full of tough shit, Jared. Just deal with it. <laughs> you got to learn now on the podcast, Jared. When you get older, life gets hard, right? We're putting you through your paces. Um, for the episode, um, hashtag is urine better than hot water? <laughs> um, and for the Oz Topsy. Hashtag uh, the stinging motif. You know, gotta gotta bring this up. We spoke to John about why he didn't pee on himself, and he's talked about that. Yet Dan could. So, <laughs> what's going on there? Um, anyway, uh, he said that didn't, didn't he say that he couldn't pee? Yeah, he said he couldn't John? pee. But like Dan could, like. I don't know. Well, Dan, Dan and John aren't the same person. <laughs> yeah, Dan was probably <laughs> fully quenched. Has anyone, like, not seen that episode of Friends where they've got to pee on Monica? Anyway, no, um, no, no, no. She can't reach it. <laughs> yes. That's right, I stepped up. Sorry, Joey reference. Uh, Noah, hashtag. I don't know what we're talking about peeing all of a sudden. Uh, for this episode, hashtag Jeff is high. <laughs> or hashtag I'll go grab the bong. Um... <laughs> And for the episode, I'm not sure. Hashtag Dan Splatter. <laughs> Hello to uh, Dan Splatter, if it should be listening to the episode tonight. Uh, Paul. Um, for the autopsy, I'd say hashtag stinging fillet of fish. <laughs> and for the episode, Ooh. let's say hashtag Luke Longley for the episode. I just want somebody to like buy a fillet of fish and get stung. <laughs> No one has what bought did... a fillet of fish since the 80s. But... <laughs> or someone to open up the two buns and there's just a fillet of fish patty in there shaped like Sting's face. <laughs> <laughs> Walk on fields of gold. Um, <laughs> fillets of gold? Uh, for Survivor, hashtag crotch sting. <laughs> and for for the autopsy hashtag Anid Australia. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, um, now we're going to close this out in a minute. Now I really think we need to end it on a sting song, but I, I've gone into this episode saying we're going to end it, of course, on uh, one song only, and that's America. Fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> what I've been asked to eat a fillet of fish on next week's live episode. <laughs> Wow, okay then. Um let's do it, Jared. I don't actually even <laughs> I actually don't even like fish, but anyway. 
Uh, now we're going to try out a grade. F- I don't think the Filipino fish is fish. <laughs> we're going <laughs> we're going to try out a grade five game here, as Noah calls it. Now uh, I don't know why this came to my head all of a sudden today, but I was like, hey, this is a fun <laughs> idea. Uh, this is the princess who lost her nose, um, but in worlds apart form. Um, a lot of people are probably have played a game in their life where you get in a group of friends and you've got to tell a story, but you've each got to do it in one word. Now, as uh, whose line is it anyway? Fans would know. Colin, it's called uh, singing opera. What's it called in whose line is it anyway? Three-headed Broadway star. That's the more specific. <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> um, singing opera. So basically, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to go around. There's five of us here. I'll work out an order in a second. We each can only say one word, and we've got to go around and try and tell a story. Now, we're going to call this game Survivor One Word instead of One World. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, so clever. I know, right? I thought of that all night. Um, so the order... Shouldn't it be words apart? Oh, shut the fuck up, Noah. Take the... <laughs> <laughs> Don't shut me down. Um, <laughs> so the order I'm going to go is, is going to go myself, Paul, Colin, Noah, and Jared. And then it will go back Keep to me. Keep it semi appropriate. So myself, Paul, Colin, Noah, Jared, remember your spots... And, yes, one word, and I don't know how long this is going to go for. And, yes, try and keep it appropriate. We've already um, had enough of... St- yeah. Uh, so, I'm going to start off with... The word we'll start off with is... Rodney. Shat. <laughs> uh, his. Buff. When. Carolyn. Eight. Fish. <laughs> Shireen was being annoying <laughs> again <laughs> because she pooped and pissed. That's two words. <laughs> oh, no, I just had to connect it. Sorry. <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can we get away from piss and shit? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, uh, tie it to Mike. To Dan. The uh, America tribe isn't good. <laughs> or smart Australians <laughs> are <laughs> <What>? racist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The American tribe is not good. Australians are racist. <laughs> the end. Yes. Let's just point out the deep irony in people calling us racist. Well, the same. Oh, well, them Australians are racist. You're not stereotyping a whole group of people there by saying that, are you? Oh, <laughs> all right. That's a perfect time to end the episode. Um, first of all, I, w- I don't know if we'll bring back one word again next week. <laughs> <laughs> I think we will, but we'll try it differently. Uh, I don't know how, but whatever. Um, Paul, thank you for joining us this evening. Yeah, it's been my pleasure. Colin, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Noah, thank you. Thank you. What game will behold us next week? <laughs> Jared, hey, maybe the princess found a nose next week and could come back. Driver Oz mini golf tournament. <laughs> Heads down, thumbs up. <laughs> Dead soul. Go, go, stop. <laughs> duck, duck, goose. <laughs> Jared, thank you. Thank you. Not a problem. Can we, like, stuck in the mud. <laughs> Can we seriously play Duck, Duck, Goose? I fucking love that game. Um, well, I think me, you, and Paul could. I'm not sure about Colin yeah. and Jack. Hey, Colin, is Duck, Duck, Goose a thing in Canada? Yeah, it's a thing. We have duck, we have geese, we have games. <laughs> <laughs> just checking, just making sure. Um, of course, uh, you would have seen the social media today, well, at the time of recording this, at least today. Uh, our episode recap this week is with the Twitties. Natalie and Nadia Anderson are going to join us. Uh, now, we're going to be recording that on Sunday afternoon Australian time, which is Saturday evening American time. So, hopefully, by the time you're listening to this... American uh, time. American time. Um, <laughs> 
the uh, it wouldn't have been recorded yet. So make sure you get them in because I know we're going to get a lot of questions in for both of them, and we're very much looking forward to having them both on the line. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm expecting not to talk much um, on the episode, so um, yes, get the questions. Just what the fans want. Yeah, well, exactly. So <laughs> it'll be smart. <laughs> ben is a man of the people. <laughs> yes, I'm giving the fans <laughs> what they want. Just me to shut the fuck up for like an hour. Um, so yes, get your questions in uh, next week. Uh, I've said this so many times this season, and something always comes up. But we will be live uh, <laughs> next week. Uh, so stay tuned. For really that. have zero excuses for this week. Well, the football was on, and then it ended up finishing early. Then <laughs> I re- re- expected. And your team lost. <laughs> no, team shut lost. up, Paul. Uh, <laughs> just because you're cocky, because your druggies got off. Um, <laughs> oh yes. Uh, Full side, mate. <laughs> <laughs> against the Swans. Good fucking luck. Um, <laughs> that Swans in Canada. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, Power Rankings with Val and Jeremy, of course, will be back up again next week. Top 10s, features, all that jazz. Oscars are still coming soon. We're hoping to announce the categories and everything in a couple of weeks because uh, now that we're in April, they're only about a month and a half away, so get excited. Um, and I will say to everybody out there who does uh, celebrate Easter, have a fantastic uh, Easter weekend. Uh, safe one, and uh, for those who get four days off in a row, you lucky fuckers, enjoy it. Um, some of us get two days off, but whatever. Or seven if you're a uni student. Um, seven if you're a uni student. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. Again with the grade five, Ben. <laughs> we'll be back next week, and ending us now, of course, is the dulcet tones of Matt Stone <laughs> and Trey Parker and Team America, fuck yeah. I'm uh, not Sting. Uh, well, this is the Sting version of... Um, we just, I just texted America. Sting. <laughs> fuck yeah. Every America you take, there'll be fuck you. No. Um, I'm leaving. Whatever. Good night, Australia. My name has been... I've never seen that before. Good night. <laughs> He's just Australia now? Yes. Oh, okay. Whatever. They're the only both of our listeners are from there, so that's all good. Um, thank you for tuning in to Smart Rods. My name is Ben, the tribe has spoken. We'll speak to you next week on the Stigging Train. <laughs>